interesting study about sowing and reaping. The Lord laid on my heart. We got two wonderful places in Genesis 27 and Genesis 29. Galatians 2 7, be not deceived, God's not mocked, whatsoever man soweth, that he shall also reap. Verse 27, it came to pass when Isaac was old, and his eyes were dim, that he could not see, he called Esau his eldest son, and said unto him, My son, said unto him, Behold, here am I. He said, Behold, now I am old, I know not the day of my death. Now therefore take, I pray thee, thy weapons, thy quiver, and thy bow, and go out into the field, and take me some venison, and make me savory meat as such I love, and bring it to me that I may eat, that my soul may bless thee before I die. Rebecca heard when Isaac spake unto Esau his son, and Esau went into the field to hunt for venison and to bring it in. And then Rebecca goes about her plan. Her gets Jacob to go out and get a kid of the goats. Makes the meal, and Rebecca pulls up this plan. She's going to deceive her husband and have her son Jacob deceive his father. And we want to pick up verse 17 27. And she gave him savory meat and the bread. And when he had prepared unto the hand of her son Jacob, he said unto his father, He said, My father, he said, Here am I. Who art thou, my son? And Jacob said unto his father, I am Esau, thy firstborn. I have done as, he, as thou badest me. Arise, I pray thee, sit and eat of my venison, that my soul may bless me. And Isaac said unto his son, How is it that thou hast found it so quickly, my son? He said, Because the Lord thy God brought it to me. You mean his mother God. His mother God. The God that brought it to him was his mother. And Isaac said to Jacob, Come near, I pray thee, I may feel, thy, feel thee, my son, whether thou be my very son Esau or not. Jacob went near unto Isaac his father and felt him. and said, The voice is Jacob's voice. The voice is Jacob's voice. But the hands are the hands of Esau. He was hairy. And he discerned him not because his hands were hairy, as his brother Esau's hands. So he blessed him. And he said, thou, Art thou my very son, Esau? And he said, I am. Liar. He said, Bring it near to me, and I will eat of my son's venison, and my soul may bless thee. And he brought it near to him, and he did eat, and he brought him wine, and he drank. Brought him wine, and he drank. And then Jacob, what, I, Isaac blesses Jacob, thinking it's Esau. So Genesis 29 and verse 15 and laban said to jacob because thou art my brother should thou therefore serve me for not tell me what shall thy wages be and laban had two daughters laban was a father isaac had two children too so did laban that are in the story he has sons later the name of the elder was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah was tender-eyed, but Rachel was beautiful and well-favored. And Jacob loved Rachel. Uh, well, another place in Genesis says that uh, that Isaac loved Esau because he ate of his meat, he ate of the venison. And I will serve thee seven years for Rachel, thy younger daughter. And Laban said, It is better that I should give her to thee and that i should give her to another man abide with me and jacob served seven years for rachel and he seen that but a few days for he loved for the love that he had for her and jacob said to laban give me my wife for my days are fulfilled i may go in unto her laban gathered together all the men of the place and made a feast and it came to pass in the evening that he took his daughter and brought her to him and went into and went in unto her. Laban gave his daughter Leah Zippa his maid for his handmaid. And it came to pass that in the morning, behold, it was Leah. And he said to Laban, What hast thou done unto me? 
Did I not serve thee for Rachel? Wherefore hast thou beguiled me? Laban said, It must not be so done in our country to give the younger before the firstborn. Does it sound familiar? Is there not a feast over here in chapter 27 that Rebecca made a feast of venison and wine and bread? Is there not a feast of wine and bread over here at the ceremony before the marriage? I mean, the ceremony before the marriage in the Bible was the reception is before the marriage. The marriage is when the man and the woman join together. There's a father. Laban and Isaac. There's two children, Esau and Jacob and Leah and Rachel. Rachel was more loved than her sister. Esau was more loved by Isaac than his brother. And we see that God's not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that he shall also reap. Jacob. Jacob works seven years for Rachel, and in the morning he finds out it's Leah. And the excuse is. Well, to give the younger before the firstborn. Let's go back over to chapter 27. Let's see what happens. And he said, verse 4, And make me savory meat such as I love, and to bring it to me that I may eat, that my soul may bless thee before they die. This is would be the blessing of the firstborn son, Esau. He's the firstborn. And Jacob, verse 19, Jacob said to his father, after his father says, who art thou? He says, I am Esau, thy firstborn. Let's look at Leah. Chapter 29, verse 26, to give the younger before the firstborn. Esau is the firstborn, Leah is the firstborn. And they, well, Esau got gypped kind of away, but had Jacob gotten Rachel, he she would have been gypped. But we know that Esau s sold the birthright uh, outright. We know that over a pottage of red bean. God would have taken care of Esau. God did not need Rachel, uh, Rebecca's help. But Rebecca ordered her son. Jacob should have went to his father and said, Dad, uh, Mom wants me to deceive you. I am, East, I, I am Jacob. I am not Esau. And Mom made this meal. But that didn't happen. So instead of the firstborn coming to Isaac, Jacob, instead of the, the firstborn being married Leah, Jacob wanted Rachel and God put Leah. And he had a problem with the rest of his life between Leah and Rachel. They battled it out. Look. Chapter 30, verse 1. And Rachel saw that but Jacob bared no children. Rachel envied her sister and said to Jacob, Give me children or else I die. Man, there was a battle between Rachel and Leah over children over Jacob. We see, where is the mother in chapter 29? She's not there. Where is the mother in chapter 27? Well, there she is. She's making the meal. But look what she says. Jacob says to her, and I'm looking, verse 12, My father, Jacob speaking, preventure will feel me, which he does, and shall seem to him as a deceiver, which he is, and shall bring a curse upon me and not a blessing. His mother said to him, Upon me be thy curse, my son. Only obey my voice and go fetch them. Go fetch me then. 
You know, after Ray, after I'm getting the names mixed up here. Forget after Jacob leaves. Between the Jacob leaving and before long before he even comes back, Rebecca dies and she never sees her boy again. Jacob will never see his mother again after he leaves. So, and according to this, we got, and I don't know about the dates, but in chapter 27, you got 1804 B.C., Chapter 29, you got 1760 B.C. The sowing reaping didn't happen automatically. And you got to wonder, with Jacob, chapter 29, well, the younger before the firstborn, I wonder when he said firstborn, if God puffed his heart. <laughs> Jacob, pay attention. Pay attention, Jacob. Now look what else here. It says, verse 25, What is that thou hast done to me? Did I not serve thee for Rachel? Now you can see Jacob would be angry. He has been deceived. All right? He has been deceived. Look at 27 9. And I will t make thee savor meat for thy father, which as he loveth. That's deceiving. He knew it was, verse 12, I shall seem to him as a deceiver. Verse 34, chapter 27. And Esau heard the words of his father, cried with a great and exceeding cry, and said to his father, Bless me, even me also, my father. And he said, Thy brother came to thee, and has taken away thy blessing. And he said, Is he not rightly named Jacob? And then Esau goes on, Would you not think that Esau is upset? You think Jacob's upset? No. Now Jacob's upset. Upset over what? A firstborn. What is Esau upset? Firstborn. What is the main character of the story? There's a father. What's the importance? The firstborn right to the firstborn son. A wife. Listen, that firstborn son, he gets that right. He gets inherited. And if he marries a, a wife... And if he dies, the brothers would take that wife and raise up a seed in the name of the firstborn. I know there's no law here. But there is in with Onan and, and Judah, his brother has died. He says, Onan, take, take his wife and raise up the seed after. And you can go check the story about that. God ends up killing him. If Re Rebecca would have left things alone, now we don't know if, if probably not Isaac knows, not sure about Rebecca. I mean, if she knows she's trying to get her way with God, but it is a foreknown fact, verse 36 of chapter 27. Is he rightly named Jacob? For he has supplanted me these two times. He has took away my birthright. Well, that, that's not true, Esau. And now he has taken away my blessing. Yes. But the birthright and the uh, blessing don't belong to you no, anymore, Esau. The beans. Somewhere in the life of Esau, God would have had to kill Esau. Or something for Jacob because Esau sold it. And what Rebecca has done, she's gone into her own hands. Like Sarah went into her own hands and said, Here, honey, I can't have a child. Here's Hagar. Remember that? Well, let's let's go back here and look. Let's check out the scriptures. Genesis chapter. Genesis chapter 16, verse 1. Now Sarai, Abraham's wife, bare had no children, and she had a handmaid, an Egyptian whose name was Hagar. And Sarah said to Abraham, Behold now, the Lord has set restrained me from bearing. 
I pray thee go unto my maid. All right, let's stop right there. We don't need going further. Be not deceived, God's not mocked. What sort of man soweth that he shall also reap? All right. We are in the same family of Isaac and Jacob. Going back to Abraham and Sarah. Sarah said, here, take my handmaid. You want to see the reaping on that one? 1913 B.C. this says. Here, take my handmaid. Let's go over to Genesis. Genesis chapter 30, verse 3. Rachel's bawled out Jacob for not having children. 3. He said, Behold my maid, Bilhah, go in unto... Did you see that? Did you just see what happened to Sarah and Hagar? Here, Abraham, take... Take my handmaid. I'm not going to have any children. Rachel says, here, take my handmaid. I'm not going to have any children. You realize Dan is the first child born by this handmaid. Dan is very closely related to an interesting study with the Antichrist. Dan, I believe, is not one of the tribes of two tribes. It's not of the 144,000 in tribulation. The Jewish men that go out and witness to the Jewish people. I believe Dan is not listed. Do you know who the first child of is Hagar and Sarah, uh, of Abraham? Ishmael, an enemy of the Jews and enemy of the world. And that enemy of Ishmael is still around today. Causing problems in the Middle East. The Arabians. We have wars and conflicts in the Middle East today because Sarah said, Here, take Hagar. The Jews are going to have problems with the children of the day of Dan. Why? Because Rachel said, Here. Take my hand, man. And over here, on the blessings, Genesis, and it's not a blessing. When Jacob blesses the 12 tribes of Israel. Genesis 49. Look what he says about Dan. Dan, I mean, Genesis 49, 16. Dan shall judge his people as one of the tribes of Israel. Dan shall be a serpent. You know what the old serpent is according to Revelation 12? The dragon? The serpent in the, in the garden? By the way, an adder, that's a snake, in the path that biteth the horse's heel so that his rider shall fall backward. Dan is a problem to the children of Israel. Now watch, verse 18, 666. Six plus six plus six, 18. I have waited for thy salvation, O Lord, the second advent. You got two children that have been born because women have taken their own way of God. And be not deceived, God's not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that he shall also reap. Here, son, take this venison, this goat meat to your father, and we'll, we'll, we'll jump ahead of God. We won't wait to see what God will do, and that's the problem. Now, people today, they know, many of my friends know I'm, I'm looking for a wife. I want a wife. I desire a wife. And many think I'm going to jump and just jump on the first woman that comes. I hope not. <laughs> I mean, the devil, I mean, he's out there. He's my enemy. Hopefully I would use discernment and hopefully I would choose the right one. I will have the daughter of God, not the daughter of the devil. But that option's there. So when Jacob in chapter 27 deceives his father and he and Esau gets angry, we have over here in Genesis chapter 29, we have 
Jacob getting angry because I didn't get my wife, the firstborn. Well, your brother didn't get, your brother got angry because he didn't get the firstborn right, Jacob. You got what you put into it. Laban deceived you, Jacob, because you deceived your daddy. Did you get that? Be not deceived. God's not mocked. Whatsoever man sow, that he shall also reap. And when you got troubles and problems in your life, and you got troubles and, and problems in your life with your children, look back and see if you can see yourself and how you were as a child. You're, I've seen it in my with my children. And that causes the kind of problem because you know, wait a minute, I, I, I look at what my children do, and it's like, oh boy, that's what I did. That's exactly what I did. Now I gotta wonder if the Jacob, oh, you know, did he get that deja vu? I feel like th this has happened to me before. And It's sad. Now, the grace of God and the wonder of God and the mercy of God, we always don't completely sow and reap what we deserve because I deserve hell for my sin. But Jesus Christ suffered and died for my sins that I may go to glory. There are things in our life that we do and have done that will cause us to reap. Smoking cigarettes may give you cancer. Drinking alcohol may ruin your, your health. Diabetes will give you problems. Treat your wife wrong and... Treat your husband wrong and... Put your wife above God. Put your children above God. Don't honor your parents. Speak of false witnessing. Covet. Sin. And there's a consequence in this life. And there are people, well, you know, they do all these wicked things and nothing bad happens. Are they sinning? Oh, yeah, they're sinning. The wages of sin is death. You will reap what you sow. You may not reap all the benefits, but at least one benefit's coming. The benefit you get from sinning will be death. Again, we have, you know, here it is. I can just imagine. It says here, son, go get me some venison. And venison in the Bible is any flesh of beast of game. Only in the United States is it deer meat, okay? That's why she says, go get the kid of the goats. And you can't, I've, I've asked people, asked people, and a wise man told me, it, it, in the Oriental, and in the world, it's not just deer meat. But I got one, it says in verse 9, go get two good kids of the goat. And then she says, verse 17, here's some bread, the meat, and he gives his father wine. Now, I'm going to read into this, but sowing and reaping, you don't have to believe this one. It says, verse 22 or 29. And Laban gathered together all the men of the place and made a feast. I can just wonder what they made. Venison, goat meat, with wine and bread. He just, I just would pitch, I would, I would stake more on that than I would go play the casino. I could be wrong. You gotta wonder if, if that is the case. Dave is, I mean, Dave, Jacob's sitting at the table saying, I feel like I've done this before. Can you even imagine at this table, and again, I could be wrong, can you imagine Jacob having to give Laban some food? Here, Laban, have some goat meat. Gee, I feel like I've done this before. 
That's weird. Wouldn't it, wouldn't it, wouldn't it be interesting? I don't know. But the fact is, here is a meal. Here is a father. Here is Jacob. Here is a firstborn in chapter 29. Chapter 27, here is a father, here is a meal, here is a firstborn, and here is Jacob. And the re end result was deceiving. <coughs> me. One firstborn didn't get what he deserved, even though he sold it. The other firstborn got what she deserved, marriage, a husband. And during the meal, there is no mother. Chapter 27. She's not there. Chapter 29, during the feast, what? And they even gathered together all the men of the place and made a feast. There's no mother there either. I'm saying you're reading too much in this. I'm not reading it enough. And we've got to learn that there's sowing and reaping throughout the whole Bible. And then when you come across Rachel, she has she's unable to bear children. You have Sarai with unable to build children. Here, here's my hand. Listen, Rachel is in another region. Right. What's the region? See if it says over here. A parent, I believe it is. Yeah, Haran. I don't know if Rachel and her family and Heron would ever got the story of of Sarai, Hagar, and it, maybe they did. Maybe that's where she got the idea from. I don't know. But that would have been in, in Jewish. That would have been, you know, Isaac, you know, your mother gave me the handmaid and, uh, you know, I went on to her and there's Ishmael and his family. And Sarah, I mean, uh, Rachel does the same thing. We also have another point here. That sowing and reaping. We have Genesis chapter 12. Verse 11. And it came to pass when he was come, this is Abraham, came near to enter in Egypt. He said unto Sarai, his wife, Behold now, I know that thou art a fair woman to look upon. Therefore thou shalt come to pass when the Egyptians shall look in thee, that they will say, This is his wife. They will kill me, but they will save thee alive. Say, on, say I pray thee, that thou art my sister. It may be well with me. Okay. That sounds good. You know, lie, lie to him for, me, for, for my life. And what am I looking for here? Genesis chapter 20. Verse 1, Abraham journeyed from thence towards the south country and dwelt between Kadesh and Shur, and then sojourned in Gerar. Abraham said of Sarah, his wife, she's my sister. So Abraham's done it twice. Evidently, Sarah is a very beautiful woman for people to want to look at her. And Abraham feels that, you know what? They're going to kill me to take my wife. That's how beautiful she is. So, let's see so in, in reaping. Shall we? Genesis chapter 26, verse 6. And Isaac dwelt in Gerar. We're in the same area we just read. And the men in the place asked him of his wife, Isaac. He said, she is my sister. Isaac's not old enough to know what happened to Abraham. Now, maybe amongst the ranks, you know, did you hear what your father did? But 
Isaac's doing the same thing that his father did twice. Oh, who's that woman? She's my sister. Now, Abraham, it was true, was his half-sister. Rebecca is not, is not, is not his sister. The servant of Abraham went off into Haram and got a woman for his what for Isaac. <clears throat> now, Isaac lied to the man about his wife. Are you ready? Are you ready for sowing and reaping? I, uh, I was going to say Isaac 27. Genesis 27, verse 8. Now, therefore, my son, obey my voice according to that which I command thee. Go now to the flock and fetch me from thence two good kids of the goats. And I will make them savory meat at, for you, thy father, which as he loveth. Verse 12. My father prevention will feel me. I shall be unto him as a deceiver. Why? Because, Jacob, you're going to lie to your father. Your mother's having you lie to your father. You know why? Where's the reaping? Well, your father lied about me. Oh. Jacob, honey, have you ever knew about your dad lying about me when we're in Gerar? I'll show him something. I'll have my son lie to Oh. Did you get that one? Be not deceived, God's not marked. Whatsoever man so it's that he shall also reap. Did you get that? And Jacob was even there. When Isaac lied about Re uh, Rebecca. Where's the lie now? Go back over here to Genesis chapter 29. And Laban gave unto his daughter, uh, no, verse 23. And it came to pass in the evening that he took Leah, his daughter, and brought her to him. Now, isn't that a lie? You lied to your dad? Your father-in-law is lying to you. He's bringing you the wrong woman. Did you see that lie? Sowing and reaping. And then there's... Where's the other one here? I am Esau thy firstborn, verse, chapter 27. I have done according as thou badest me. That's a lie. So he gets a lie for a wife, Leah, the firstborn. Now, Jacob speaks. Verse 19, I am Esau, thy, verse 20, because the Lord thy God brought them to me. And, the, and verse 24, I am. I thou very my son, he goes, I am. Now, the words of Jacob are very scarce. He's not going to open up his mouth all the time because the more he opens up his mouth, the more his father can say, it don't sound like Esau. The words will deceive, but watch here. And Laban gave daughter Leah, chapter 29, Zephyr is made to be wife. Came to pass in the morning, behold, it was Leah. And this is, I, I heard many preachers preach about this, so I don't think I would be wrong. But Leah had to have been quiet that night. Or very few words. Because the more she would have talked, the more she would have gave herself away. Now, we don't know if she said anything. I would assume she didn't, but maybe she sounded like Rachel. Sometimes you don't. Jacob's words were scarce. Because the more I'm going to talk, the more dad's going to know it's not Esau. Leah, if I even say a word. I would assume that Laban told Leah, don't you dare say a word. I 
I would assume that Ray, uh, Rebecca would tell her son, don't tell your dad. Laban, don't tell Jacob. Don't tell your dad what I'm doing. Because why? Because Rebecca gave Jacob the clothing to smell and the skins to feel as hairy and, and smell the wilderness of Esau. Don't you tell your father it's Jacob. You tell your father you're Esau. Laban, Leah, don't you dare tell you who you are. Keep quiet. Quiet. I'm telling you, this, this, it was set. There it is. Then we got chapter 27. Esau comes in. Verse 30. Came to pass as soon as Isaac had made an end of blessing Jacob. Jacob was scarce going out of the presence of Isaac, his father. And Esau, his brother, came in from the hunting. Also made savory meat. Verse 32, Isaac, he said to his father, rise up, I got your meat. 33, Isaac was trembling very rough, said, who? Where is he that what, to take in the venison? 34, Esau heard the words of his father. Was exceedingly, he was angry, he got upset. Verse 39, I, Isaac, his father, answered, said, Behold, thy, thy dwelling shall be of the fat. And Esau gets a secondary blessing. And it says Esau hated Jacob because of the blessings where his father had blessed him. Because of Jacob. So, let's go over to chapter 30. Verse number 14, and Reuben went in the days of wheat harvest and found mandrakes in the field and brought them to his mother Leah. Then Rachel said to Leah, give me, I pray thee, of thy son's mandate. And she said to her, is it a small matter that thou hast taken my husband and would take now my son's mandrakes also? Sounds like a little anger right there. Sounds like a battle, doesn't it? There's a fight. <laughs> There was an argument between Esau and Jacob after that afternoon. There's an argument between Leah and Rachel. Interesting. Look at chapter 30, verse 2. And Jacob's anger was killed against Rachel. He said, Am I in God's stead? Uh, yes, you are. Wait a minute. Am I in God's stead? You ready for this one? Genesis 27, verse 20. Because the Lord thy God brought it to me. Look at verse 24. You want to see this one? And he said, Art thou my very son Esau? I am. Now, who are two people in the Bible that said, I am? Am I in God's stead? I guess you are, Jacob. You could have let God take care of Esau and got that blessing. I don't know how it would have been done. But God acknowledges us in the New Testament. Hey, he sold it and he couldn't get it back and lost out. Lost out. We have a. Uh, Chapter 28. He lied upon a certain place and tarried all night because the sun was set. And he took the stones of the place and put them for a pillow and lay down in the place to sleep. He's out in the fields. He's not in the house. He's on the run. Chapter 27. Verse number three. Now therefore take, I pray thee, thy weapon, thy quiver, and thy bow, and go out in the field. I 
I mean, I, I could speculate, but outside of speculation, look what we have here. The poor life of Jacob. The poor life of Abraham. The poor life of, of Isaac. And then our lives. Listen. Galatians 6, 7. Be not deceived, God's not marked. Whatsoever man sows, that he shall all three. That is a church age epistle written to the church. Christians think that they got this force field. I will never, I, my life will be great and wonderful and prosperous and all that. Not if you do wrong. Now we're going to do wrong. We're going to sin. We got to pray to God for the mercy and grace of our sins that Show us a little latitude for what we reap when we sow. When you sow your wild oats, some of them wild oats come back as tares. Chaff. Waste. And it could be many, many years. You might even forgot when you sowed, now you're reaping. 